So hello everyone. This is Shiny um, Mastering Shiny Book Club. Uh, we will discuss today Chapter Twelve, Tidy Evaluation. Um, the learning objective of this chapter is learn the difference between the data variable and the environment environment variable, and we will learn how to create Shiny apps that lets the user choose which variable will be fed into a tidy diverse function, um, the de the deplier way and the ggplot way. Um, so yeah, this is about, we'll talk about like two different way of, uh, of selecting a variable or referencing a variable, which is that the masking and tidy selection, uh, it's, it seems like it, uh, it feels weird for me because there, if you're coming from a like a Python background, this is already like handled for you. You don't, you don't need to get the reference um, as in tight in, in in R, because in R you have this, this tight diverse way of doing things. So the reference is done by done by R behind the scenes. So uh, you need to know how to enforce this reference by writing specific way of syntax. Um, so that's what we will learn. Um, yeah, let's begin. Um, okay, so the tidy evaluation is used through, throughout uh, the tidyverse to make interactive data exploration more fluid. But it comes with a cost. It's hard to refer a variable indirectly and hence harder to program with. Uh, in this chapter, you will learn how to wrap ggplot2 and deployer functions in a shiny app. The techniques for wrapping ggplot2 and the player function in a, uh, in a functions and package are a little different than that covered in other resources, uh, like using using ggplot in packages and programming with the player. Um, so yeah, we will learn uh, yeah like a different way than they are mentioning in these resources. Um, motivation why we will learn this. Uh, like why would would this be useful? So below we create an app that allow you to filter a numeric variable to us uh, to select rows uh, that are greater than a threshold. Um, the app runs without an error, but it doesn't return a correct result. All the row has the value values of caret less than less than one. Um, the goal of this chapter is to help you understand why this doesn't work and why the player thinks you have asked for a uh, filter diamond carrot bigger than one. Uh, yeah, he's talking about this example where we have a select input, numeric input, table imp output. Uh, the select input is a variable with a couple of values coming from the numbar here and uh, the numeric input uh, the value is one is a default and it stores its its value in the minimum variable um, as an input and in our, our environment variable we'll talk about environment variable now um, and the server in the server we have a reactive that return a diamond uh, that filtered uh, by this condition uh, where the input var um, the var variable in, in the input uh, is bigger than minimum. So normally this would work in the normal, like um, even in like uh, in Python, you, especially in Python, you will, it's the same as here. You This is will not work as long as you don't reference it um, or convert it or use it somewhere else. Um, so yeah, the referencing here done behind the scene. So it doesn't know which is what. So is it this input vari variable is inside the diamond? Like this input, is it inside the diamond or not? So it, he doesn't know, so that's why it could be confusing for it to, to decide what 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 is what. Um, so here it, it will just um, replace the variable of var which is here, the choice. For example, here we choose, let's go to, to the example, I think. 
is here. Yeah, this one. So yeah, uh, when we choose a carrot or a variable, depths, for example, uh, we we can we compare the the variable with the minimum uh, as a value. Now, what is happening is that we replace. Let's go to. Yeah, yeah. We replace the the input var with the value that comes, which is the carrot here. Uh, and it thinks that the var is the the string carrot. So this is the string. Uh, so is the string bigger than um, a number? It's always right. So it doesn't like getting getting us the 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 result that we want. So, yeah, that's why is the evaluation is very tricky and the referencing very tricky here because we don't distinguish between um, what to use uh, as a reference uh, and what uh, and, and, and what we want to um, the reference of the dia the inside of the diamond variable and the outside or global variables that we use so. This distinguishes uh you know, distinction is doesn't doesn't exist yet. So that's why we will give up or um, introduce a new terms to understand each and every one uh, in isolation. So this is the problem of indirection. Normally, when using tidyverse function, you type the name of the variable directly uh, in the function call, but now. You you want to refer to it indirectly. Uh, the variable carrot is stored inside another variable, uh, which is input var, and so yeah, this is are the terms that we introduced the new terms that we will want to use now, so from now on. So to referencing different types of variables, uh, inside and outside um, uh, the context, I would say, of uh, of tidy. Of tidyverse, so uh, for example, uh, as an environment variable is a programming variable that you create with an assignment. So input var is an assignment variable, is an input var environment variable because we assign it here. Um, for example, here we assign this these values to this. So it's an environment. This is an environment variable. We use we use it here. So it's by by passing it to the choices we are using an environment variable. Uh, so yeah, this is an environment variable. The data variable is data frame variables. The inside or statistical variable that lives inside the data frame. Carrot is a data variable uh, because we have a column called carrot. And we have a column called depths. We have a column called table, clarity, and so on. So these we call column variables, and we call also uh, the the global variable or the programmatic the programmatic variables variable. So the distinction the, the distinction is these are the the ones that uh, the programming one is called environment variable, and the the ones that inside the table, inside the data frame, inside the tuple, all of them called uh, the data variable. So with these new terms, we can now, uh, we can make the problem of uh, indirection more clear. We have we have a data variable caret stored inside an environment variable, which is input bar, and we need some way to tell the player this. Uh, there are two slightly different way to do this. Depending on whether the function you are working with is a data masking function or a tidy selection function, and we will talk about each of them soon. Um, so let's begin with data masking. So data masking function allow you to use variable in the current data frame without any extra syntax. Uh, it's used to it's used in many deployer functions like arrange, filter, group by, mutate, and summarize. 
And of course, in ggplot two, we have uh, uh, ES. Um, so data masking is useful because it's lets you use that variable without any additional syntax. And I think we have here, uh, yeah. Uh, this is called filter, which is used as a data variable. Curate here is a data variable. Um, we reference in it, referencing um, the column name. Uh, so we don't need the quotation or the string as a string or something. All of this handled by the player uh, package behind the scene. Uh, so we just use it to reference directly uh, the, the the data variable, which is current, which is a column name. And men here is um, as an environment variable. And since we are adding it uh, to like outside of the scope of uh, of the this this deployer, we have it uh, in like we are assigning one to min. And then we evaluate it here. Uh, this this is equivalent to this R base R uh, example. So in base R we we have this kind of uh, the same way we have in Python. There there is like a reference uh, a way of referencing uh, or expression and or conditioning. Um, I think it's called index indexing. Uh, don't know if, if it's the same name in in R, but in 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 Python is indexing, and um, so we have this expression to that which is have which is we 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 reference the diamond the current diamond column, and here we are referencing the uh, the minimum variable, and yeah, this is evaluated first. And then we are using the index to get the value of from uh, this condition, the true, true or false, the one, two, or zero to uh, to the whole, like to the whole uh, table, like to, to show the whole table. Um, yeah, so I would say like people are used to base R using base R will definitely want to use this as a as a as a normal way. But uh, since most of the packages or most of the toolbox that R provide uh, or our developers are using is using deployer and tidyverse and other like battery uh, libraries that. Uh, Really uh, like support this system, the ecosystem. Um, they they prefer to use this uh, the deployer functions over this, and we'll say why. Uh, I think they, yeah, we'll say he why, but in brief. So base R function refer to data variable with this dollar sign, okay, and you you often have to repeat the name of the data frame multiple times making it clear what is a data variable and what is an environment variable. It also makes makes it straightforward to use the indirection because you can store the name of the data variable in an environment variable and then switch from um, like from the dollar sign to the indexing or just the specialized indexing, something like that in uh, in base R. And yeah, this is not like it's not, I don't think people are still using this syntax uh, anymore, but yeah, feel free if you have if you have used it or so see something someone using this syntax. Um, like if you if you if you found someone that's using the syntax, please tell me because I just want to to read some of the old uh, old stuff are like. People are using a lot of the now uh, the, the new version of R, so I don't see <laughs> see them explore uh, or write scripts as they done before. Um, so I don't like re I do I like reading open source stuff, so that's why I 
I'm asking. Um, so yeah, did did you did you see someone that using the same syntax as this? I'm not sure, but I think uh, advanced R discusses the base R syntax. Mm, interesting. So in advanced R, I think they are talking about the programming R more than uh, using R for data analysis, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think people that like developing packages or developing systems or developing um, a project in R, uh, other than like just uh, data analysis, you could use this syntax in somewhere, somewhere. But um, I think if you're, even in in data frame or in data tables, uh, I don't see it, see them using this more often. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a way of using the start uh, way of using the the, the R language, uh, but the old way. So. Yeah, you just introduce it here because because to to uh to elaborate or to to make it clear or simpler for us to know the distinguish uh, the distinction between the old version of R and um the tidy way of doing same. Um. So yeah, we can achieve the same result with tidy evaluation by somehow adding this uh dollar sign back into picture while data masking by using the date dot data and uh, or dot m so yeah this is the the catch or the tips that we are that we'll get from all the chapter all the chapter is to reference in the context of deployer over in the context of um ggplot if you want to reference a data variable use this dot data syntax and if you want to to reference a the environment variable, we use this dot uh, syntax. It's like a, an object that attached uh, by R behind the scene, and it attached the uh, the data variables into the data object, and attach the environment variable into the info object. That's what I would say because of the syntax, uh, how it's how the syntax works, uh, what it looks like. Um, so yeah, to be explicit about whether you are talking about data or in, so yeah, this is the way we, we do explicit or mentioning is explicitly how we are referencing the carrot and how we are referencing the minimum var variable. Um, yeah, we could, instead of using, uh, the, uh, the dollar sign, we could use this as the same as this, uh, the index or specialized index. I don't know what it's called. But, uh, it's a uh, it like the variable in the data, which the data here is called the diamond. Uh, I think the diamond uh, table. So yeah, it's referencing the diamond table, and we call uh, the column name which is variable. Um, so the numvars. Yeah, this is the same example I think, but here we. Now we uh, are explicitly mentioning the environment variable uh, to distinguish between the environment variable and uh, the data variable. And you see here that we are mentioning this as uh, a name of um, uh, the column name. So by using the syntax, we are telling like the plier uh, filter function that this input var is not is not an uh, an string normal string is not a value just a value uh, uh it's a reference to uh or it's referred to the column name in the diamond uh data set so yeah this is how we we do it and to mention environment variable we just do use this dot in uh, uh syntax same yeah now after we did this we see here now it's working if we see the dips i think it's working for a carrot yeah so the minimum is two it will come 
only give user two. And if you open it up, it will filter on based on the minimum, which is what we want to pair our first pair replace. But in the old one, this is was not working because it was com uh, comparing the comparing the uh, the carrot string with with a number minimum, so it will not work. Uh, even if we change this, it will not work because it's it's, uh, it's different than um, uh, what is like how it's evaluating string than just uh, evaluating the the value of of the string of the column name. Um, so yeah, let's go into yeah. We see this one. I have a question about the environment variable. Yeah. So if we have a reactive, for example, we don't just use the input min, but we create a new value and we make it a reactive, which is based on input min. Is that also an environment variable based on the description? I think so, yes, but is that correct? Uh, I think, yeah, it's the same, but could you say it, say it again? Say it again, like... Yeah, I'm saying that here we use, in the example, we have dot n and then dollar sign input min. So instead yeah. of uh, using input min directly, what if we have another value, which is based on input min? Uh, let's say we take input min, multiply it with 10, and we want to use that in our filter. Uh, yeah. Because we created as a reactive, uh, does that count as an environment variable? Yeah, I think it counts as a environment variable because it depends on it. Um, so it's just a, a, a modification for the environment variable, right? So yeah. it's the same. And yeah, as I, I, I would say that environment variable is like uh, this global way of defining variable. But here is mentioning it as like in the context of input, here we have the input itself. Uh, so when we are mentioning environment, um, it's like it's like it's saying in this scope or in this functional scope, which is this environment, uh, we want the input that has the minimum variable. So I would say it's like linking between the scoping, function scoping, and uh, the variables that uh, get get uh, attached in the, in the in behind the scene in Shiny. So this input get attached, no, uh, like by default, like behind the scene inside in Shiny, to to the to the inputs that here, uh, or or inputs in the, in the UI. That's happened by Shiny itself. So you are mentioning the environment of all inputs, and we mention it the minimum variable or on all of them. So it's like we are explicitly like choosing the variable that we want from all inputs. Um, yeah, it's it's. I I would say that this is similar to Python as as well, uh, in in the way that if we, if we if we are, if I understand it well, uh, it's it's like the attaching the scopes of of the function with uh, with the variable that coming to the function so yeah um yeah thanks for asking uh good question so here we apply the idea of dynamic plot uh, okay we can talk about ggplot too um uh, how we could use this way of selecting the variable so here yeah, scatter used to create a scatter plot by selecting the variable to appear on X and Y axis. So you see here, using the same syntax of data variable, um, like selecting the X column and the Y column, or oh, sorry, the X, uh, like X, col X column inside the data. Uh, I think they have the data here. Yeah. 
what is the example? I think it has the example in, in the book itself. This one? Yeah, this one. So yeah, this is like uh, the species. And we change the x and y variable to change uh, the the coordinate. Let's see the let's see the, how it's done. Now uh, we are mapping the x and y here as normal, but uh, we explicitly like mentioning that it this input we want to select uh the its value the input uh if we want to evaluate this like normally in the reactive or any type of reaction rea reactive function this will be uh the value of this variable that's coming from the select input and the variable which will be the names of the iris that is that uh, the, the different name of columns and uh, uh, as we see here uh the different name of columns uh, and when we select one of them now it's it's become this this is a string that we want to select based on and this is how we filter based on this so this evaluated to the string and then we go and and see this uh, the column name in the data set the iris data set and we evaluate this uh, our map maps this to the iris data set um, so this will not work if you're not using this in the data variable, uh, the data syntax, uh, as we said before, uh, because it, you will not know what, like, it will see but just the the value uh, of. Oh, did the sound go out? You hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you. Hello? Yes. We're still there. Now we don't hear you. Let's see. Hello. I can hear you now. Okay, you hear me now? So yeah. everything goes? Okay. Don't know what happens, but okay. Yes, we can hear you now. Awesome. So yeah, uh, I was talking about alternatively, we could allow the user to pick the geom. Uh, the following app uses a switch statement to generate a reactive geom that is later added to the plot. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend doing this inside like reactive. We could like ex like uh, abstract this in, in its own functionality, uh, its own function, and then pass uh, the value to it, and then use the function here. 
this is a better practice but yeah this is the the more that you uh yeah the 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 more that you have con make the user have control over the the graph the more complex it will be uh to to use the, this programming control construct so yeah we have to be careful that's what it said in the book uh, that uh the more that you you giving controls to the user that uh, uh, you have to be careful in the when you build the the ui um and yeah this app allow you to select which variable are plotted on the x and y axis and let's see it yeah spreading like chart and with the species we we could use this so this is very uh, very interesting as well so if you go back let's see this in the, the code I cannot hear you, Ahmed, if you're speaking. Hello, is it, is it now okay? Yeah. Now I can hear you. Can I hear you again? Maybe it's the network or something. Okay, hello guys. I can hear you now. Yeah, I, I just uh, entered with my phone and hope it will be better. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just, just uh, talking about this syntax and uh, this example. Um, we update the slider based on the value, uh, the the um, oh yeah the, the the ranges that we picked from the empty cars via uh, data set and we have a filter that we 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 filter based on the minimum and the variable again with the arrange function same as like the same data that the masking thing um so yeah it's the same syntax uh, I would say it's the same as the previous one. Most other problems can be solved by combining the data with your existing programming skills. For example, what if you want to conditionally sort in either ascending or descending order? Uh, this is a normal if statement that we add 
to the to the reactive function if the if the input is the input uh, descending is exist or true it will be evaluated to true or false uh, since it's in a uh, checkbox input and uh, if it's true it's in the descending if it's false it's, uh, it's uh, ascending and based on it we uh, we display or we return the range function, the the values of the range function, uh, based on this. And yeah, user supply. This app allows the user to be up to upload the TSV file, then select a variable and filter by it. It will work for a vast majority of inputs that you might try with with. But you are opening the hole. Uh, it will work with the vast majority of the frames. However, it, if the data frame contains a variable called input, we we get an error message because filter is attempting to evaluate df input min. And since there is an an input min input uh, called uh, like a column name input, it will like conflict with the input context. Uh, with the input like uh, that provided by Shiny. Yeah, the problem is due to the ambiguity of data variables, as, as I said, and environment variables. And because data masking prefer, uh, prefers to use the data variable if both are variable, we can resolve the problem by using .env to tell filter only look for men in the environment variable. Uh, you see here, if we have a data frame X and Y, and input list bar, um, bar X and minimum zero. If you use the filter, now it's uh, we're using the filter of the data frame in the data frame, um, and here we have different. Uh, we have an input variable. If we did this, it will come the error. It'll, it will show up the error. Because it doesn't know, did you mention? Did you mentioning? Uh, are you mentioning that uh, the environment variable input or the data variable input? So this comes. Uh, this like result in an error. You only need to worry about the problem when you're working with user supplied data. When working with your own data, you can ensure the names of your data variable don't clash with the names of your environment variables. So yeah, tips for naming uh, the data variables is not making it clash with the environment variables when you are naming it. Why not use base R? So yeah, uh, I don't know why uh, we are not using base R, but uh, the, the main idea is uh, the filter have a lot of battery coming with it behind the scene. I would call it battery, battery libraries or battery, um, uh, yeah, like a very supporting, a lot of support functions that happening behind the scenes that we uh, will need to add if we will use uh, BizR. So that's totally legitimate position as long as you are aware of the work that the filter does. Uh, so if you, uh, to the, so you can generate the equivalent BizR code. In this case, you will need to drop false because the DF contains a single column. Otherwise, you will get a vector instead of a data frame. Um, and you will need to, to which to use the which function or similar drop any missing values. This happens automatically with filter. Uh, and you can do group wising filtering uh, like this syntax. Uh, like like you are grouping by variable and then you put filter based on the group, this will not be applicable if you are using uh, base R. In general, if you are using deployer for very simple cases, you might find it easier to use base R functions that don't, the, don't use data masking. However, in my opinion, uh, one of the advantages of the tidyverse is the careful thought that has been applied to edge cases so that functions work more consistently in um, in deployer uh, uh, to support you as a 
uh, as a developer or a data scientist or data analyst. So yeah, this is about data masking. Now tidy, tidy selection is very straightforward. We are just using um, all of and any of uh, the post. So the only difference that is what happens if you if you supply a variable name that doesn't exist in the input, all of will throw an error while any of will sli slightly ignore the error, uh, even if it exists. So yeah, we have this kind of stuff in uh, also in Python as well. Um, but yeah, the more uh, convenient way that we are using it, uh, I would say that the data masking is more appropriate to use. But you will see here. You will see here that. Uh, but let's 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 first discuss the all of and any of. So in this example, we have select input and table output. We have a requirement with the bars input, and we are selecting all of input bars. So first argument is the select what we want to select in this data set, in the empty cars here. Uh, so we want to select the input bars, um, all of, of is the input bars. Uh, so this is the first argument. Second argument, argument I think is, um, I think it's a function that we could apply into the, the selection that you are did. Uh, so working with multiple variables is trivial when you are working with a function that uses the tidy selection. You can just pass as a character vector of or of, of a variable names into uh, any of and all of. Wouldn't be nice to okay. And where is it? You still didn't like show an example of using the second variable. Yeah, the second argument here. Uh, yeah. So here you're talking about the, as a cross function. So let's let's talk about across it uh, first. That's the idea of across, uh, which is wouldn't be nice to could do that data masking function too. So we here here we he mentions that we could like merge. Okay, we could merge uh, the the tidy selection with data masking, uh, like using the any of and all of, same as uh, using the data masking in the same way. Uh, this is, it allows you uh, by using the cross, uh, a cross function. Uh, it's added in the player one and it allow you to, to use the tidy selection inside data masking functions. Um, it's typically used with either one or, or two arguments. The first argument select a variable and is useful in a function like group by or distinct. Here, I think we have a group by, and the across variable is, we are just selecting. So first argument is this, what we select, what are we selecting, like, um, same as like uh, all of without anything. So here we don't, we don't like have a benefit for it, but uh, in the second example, we have the second argument, I would say, Second argument is a function or a list of functions that apply to each selected column. And you see here that across having this first argument, let's see, this, this one, yeah. So across having this first first argument, all of and input R, and we want to apply all of these bars that we selected from this uh, select input. We have we want to commonly like uh, grouping by grouping them, apply the mean function, which is the minimum uh, the the average. We want to get the average of each one of them, uh, like together. Um, so this could be very useful. Um, I would say this we really could be useful more than just the data masking because we are doing uh, like. Selecting and applying function at the same time uh, with the same syntax, but I think we could do this in the deployer with just multiple steps uh, using a group by and summarize after afterward and 
yeah but it will not work i think it will not working the it will not work the, in in china i would say in, in china itself to do this you have to like follow the syntax this this one uh, using the across function um yeah i would say it's like map uh, a map function i will I don't know if if we if we discussed map function before, uh, that apply for every for every value we are apply a function on it. Um, so same same logic. Um, but with uh, but with the like a, a tidy selection which is this one. And yeah, I don't know I don't know if there is something else. Okay, let's go to the book. Before we finish, because I think there is, yeah, yeah, this one. So before we go, it was a brief comment that paste and parse and evolve. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's just warning you if you are using this combination of functions. Um, it's tempting to approach because it requires a, uh, learning very few new ideas, but it has some major downsides because you are pasting strings together. So pasting strings together are all, always a, a bad idea. Uh, if you have a production uh, Shiny app, because open the door for a security holes or like a security breach, um, because you could like inject strings into the, the string that you are evaluating um so yeah this is isn't super important if you are if you're shiny apps that only use it by you uh, but it isn't a good habit to get into uh otherwise it's very uh easy to accidentally create a security hole in app that you share more widely uh we'll come back to, to the idea in chapter 22 which is talking about the security um yeah you shouldn't feel bad if this is the only way you can figure out just to solve a problem but when you have a bit more mental space i would recommend spending some time figuring out how to do how to do it with this thing without string man manipulation this will help you become a better r programmer yeah so we're talking about uh like don't use uh the base function with like with the eval and bars together um uh, but yeah this is a, like a recommendation from the uh from the author uh i don't i think i cover it all but let's see if i miss something okay Yeah, I think that's it. So anyone have any like same some something to add here before I finish? Hello there. Can you hear me guys? Cool. Yeah, so next chapter, good. yeah, awesome. So next chapter we'll talk about uh, interactivity, reactivity thing, and it will be a lot like we'll talk about dive deeper into the re reactivity in I think four chapter, yeah, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen, and I think I will I. I will present them, them all because I'm very interested in reactive programming uh, side of Shiny. Um, I will try to give give examples for a, sh a Pi Shiny if we have time uh, at the end of uh, uh, each chapter. Um, but yeah, we'll see. If you have time, we'll, we'll do it. Um, but yeah, yeah like, it's very important chapters because the more that you get advanced in reactive programming, the more you will uh, cleverly build re interactive stuff in Shiny. 
uh, using the, the full capacity or full potential of reactive reactivity. So yeah, so thanks for uh, for joining, guys, and uh, I hope uh, to see you soon in the next time. So yeah.